What's going on, people? It's Glendon Cameron once again with the American Hustler Podcast. The last few weeks have been extremely interesting. Extremely. A lot of things are going down. A lot of things have happened. It's um, the best of times in many regards. But there's been a little fuckery. Just a little bit of fuckery. And uh, we'll talk about that in just a minute. Hey, if you want to improve how you think, go ahead and grab a copy of my audiobook, The Hustler's Mindset, Pimping Your Mind for Success. Get it today for free and change your life. First thing that I want to address is my current course, 30 days to $2,500. It's going way better than I anticipated. Certain benchmarks, certain things I thought were going to happen much later have already happened, which has made me reevaluate. Currently, there's a two day break. If you want to join my group, 30 days to 2,500 bucks, do so. Links below. A lot of cool stuff. Uh, There's a few shout outs. Um, Like I said, we're at day eight and we have Karen, the soap girl slinging that soap. We have one person who's made 1300 bucks, which means that they are um, more than halfway there first week. A lot of people are re-strategizing their business. We had M. I don't know if she wants me to say her whole name, but she actually sold more perfume at her flea market than she's ever done before. All of this is in the first week. And I, I am really, really proud of those people because the thing is, the course is nothing without action. You can go out and spend $30,000 on a degree. You can go out and spend $150,000 on a degree or get a certification or get a certificate. But if you are still a yard bird, it's really not going to be of much value to you. Which brings me to point number two. It took a while for it to happen. It really did. I thought it was going to come because if you haven't noticed, my skin's kind of chocolatey brown. It's really cool. It's really nice. It's like I have a permanent suntan. It's one of the best things in the world. Best. Love it. And someone came to me and was like, Glendon, I've been watching you for a long, long time. And you've never acknowledged God in your videos. And that is a valid point. And it's a valid point that will continue to keep on giving. This is my thought process. When I stopped praying and started doing, my life changed. Do I believe in God? Sure, I do. Do I believe in higher power? Yes, I do. Do I believe in religion? Nope, not at all. I have seen more harm, damage, and bad things done to people in the name of religion. Yes, there's some good stuff. But from what I see with the current landscape of religion, I'm not getting any benefit. Being a son of the South, every now and then I will be pulled back in because of the entertainment of a good Baptist sermon. Because it's theatrics. It really is. You get that feeling. And that's part of mind mapping. But if you want to take your life in a different direction, and I'm not going to be indelicate to anyone's religious beliefs. There's no need for that. I would say... If you're praying, all right, go ahead and continue to pray. If you're acknowledging God, go ahead and continue to acknowledge God. But wake up one morning and triple the efforts that you're putting into your life and chart the results. That's all I got to say. And see which one works best. That's all I got to say. And with this course, a lot of people are coming in. I'm loving the Q&A session that happens after the presentation. I am really, really seeing that there are many people that don't really understand why they need a business. And I'm not going to give you the standard answers of it's more money. No, no, no. That's not it. That's not it. The number one reason that you need a business is it provides you the tools and skill sets for you to emancipate yourself from the regular life of the average American. It's the number one reason you need to start a business, not money, freedom. 
I was out today running some errands and I found myself getting impatient because I typically don't have to deal with traffic when I go to the bank. It's me, soccer moms and uh, the retired. And that's been my life for five years. And I really looked at it and understand I'm not rich or fantastically wealthy. None of that stuff. I'm, I'm just comfortable. I'm very comfortable. But to me, the freedom to dictate the course of your day is priceless. Say it's just you, your wife and the dog and y'all run, you know, husband and wife ink and you're only making 50 grand a year, but you're free. You're free. When I talk to my friends who have jobs, there's a, there's a handful. They never complain. They have a great job. Things are good. The environment's great. But most of them, it's some bullshit. I really do believe that when you become truly free, when you become emancipated from the regular corporate deal, and it's not even nine to five, it's more like six in the morning to 6 p.m. Really, when you factor in, you had to get up, you had to get dressed, you had to get the kids to daycare, you had to go get your Starbucks coffee. And then when you got off at 530, there was an unexplained meeting. So there are many people who are working 10 to 12 hours a day. And they're getting paid for eight when you really do the math. And that's part of the construct of not being able to critically think about your situation. If you had a proper financial mentor, someone would have told you a long time ago that the clock starts sticking, ticking when you wake up in the morning, not when you get to your desk, because all of those actions that you're making, you would not make unless you were going to work. So all that time counts. So you have a lot of people, and that's the reason people are grumpy, disenfranchised, unhappy, because they're tired. They're seriously exhausted. Then if you factor in children in the equation, you have a recipe for people to be on Prozac and other antidepressants because they're about to lose it. This system that's in place wasn't really designed for you to win. You'll hear that things like trickle down economics. My life did not really become set on fire until I started my first successful business. I didn't make a lot of money. I didn't make a lot of money, but I was able to control my time. I was able to dictate, delegate, dominate. I became a free person for the first time in my life. I can't tell you what that feeling feels like. There are many people out there. You're not free. You think you're free, but can you like in the middle of the day, go for a walk and no one's looking for you? Can you go get your kids out of school and just hang out and have ice cream and go look at the ducks by the pond? Can you do that stuff without some negative consequence? Like you have to use your vacation time or you won't get paid or you may get in trouble or you may get laid off. Or you may get fired or that may come up in your annual review. If any of those things are what's going on with your life, you're not free. And another thing, uh, someone emailed me and I wasn't going to address it because it, it happened like God, months ago, really. But, you know, I figure since I'm doing this in in the vein of freedom, someone's like, well, why don't you have a house? You know, if you're this successful person, successful people have houses. I'll tell you why I don't have a house. I can't tell you why someone else wouldn't have a house. I don't want to upkeep the maintenance. Um, I don't want to deal with it. I've had a house before. I had a few houses before. Changing filters, you know, paying the lawn, man, art. I don't want to deal with it. Also, with me in my you know, deal of freedom, a house isn't freedom. If you get a house and there's a mortgage on it, that mortgage must be paid. Even if the house is paid off, you still must pay property taxes. If you don't do one or both of these things, you could lose that house. So my deal is instead of having this place, and because for many people, a house is actually like an anchor. It prevents you from moving. It prevents you from going for another job because you can't sell your house. And you're like, I may lose money. I've seen all of this stuff for the last four years with a lot of my friends. Just it's a sign of stability for many people. But it's also one of the biggest roadblocks to success. Because if you have a house, you are trapped. 
until you sell that house. And if you don't do get out of that house properly, there's a lot of negative consequences that can happen to you. So for me, I am about creating books, projects, videos, and podcasts. I am creating these products that will pay me today. They'll pay me next year and they'll pay me the year after they'll pay me the next decade. So instead of investing my time and effort in buying something that can appreciate in the right zip code, it can real estate is still a great investment. If you buy it and you rent it to someone else, it's an awesome investment. It's a great business. I highly recommend it. But if you're buying a house for yourself and your family, get that bad boy paid off as soon as possible. You know, come up with a plan. You know, you and the wife, it's like, okay, we both make 50. This is what we're going to do. Uh, the house is 300000 For the next six years, we're going to take your whole check, and we're going to dump it and get this house paid off. You know, so that's I don't have a house because I don't want one. If I wanted one, I'd go get one because I'm about this freedom deal. You know, uh, I may leave Atlanta. Thought about it several times. So I don't have any of those barriers to me leaving or going somewhere else. I have none. And that's one of the ways I want to kind of keep it for now, because when you are free, you value it. Now, this is going to sound really, really strange. I actually understand why some homeless people, not all, but some stay homeless because they're free from responsibility. They're out of the system and they are an independent person, but they must deal with life on the streets Probably being robbed, raped. So, so, you know, it's a trade off. But I actually understand why some of them do it because the number one reason for people becoming homeless is mental illness and substance abuse or a combination of both the two. And there's folks out there that have neither affliction and they're still out there because they don't want to be captivated by all of this stuff, which I, I do understand. But when you become an evolved person, when you understand how the world works, you can still make money. And be part of the system, but not be adversely impacted by the system. That's the whole thing about creating your own economy. Because, you know, I was homeless for a short period of time. And there's some really smart people out there on the streets. It's more of a mindset than a, an ability type event. But for you, you got to start thinking about your own business. I don't care what kind of job you have. I don't care if you're a doctor I'll actually use an example. I actually know a few doctors, and when certain specialties got hit hard, doctors changed specialties. They went back for fellowships and internships to do something else. Even that field is not immune to the changes and the impact of the economy. Law? Law is probably most attorneys don't make jack. You know, they look at that top 10 percent of the folks making 160 to a million dollars a year. That's a small handful of attorneys. Average attorney. He's not he or she's not really making a lot of money. Matter of fact, there was an article that one attorney because she had to move and she had to take this job because of the hours involved. She actually lost custody of her child. That's not winning. That's not winning. So for you. If you're out there in YouTube and you're listening to this, going back to reason number one, why you should emancipate yourself from your job. And this is how you should do it. You got a job and you can ask anyone out there in YouTube land. I do not advocate anyone quitting their job before the income of their business meets or exceeds their current income. I've got several people you can ask. It's like, no, 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 no. It's too early to quit your job. What you want to do is what I call parallel hustling or double duty. You have the job. Then when you get off from the job, you have your business. Or if you have what I call a cush job, where if you can sit down and like, say you work in the office and you have to do reports and you have to do certain things. When I was selling insurance, I created the methodology where I can get my work done in two hours and I had the rest of the day to goof off. I wasn't involved as I am now. If I was involved then as I am now, I would have worked those two hours and then I would have created a business on their dime for the other six. So many of you are in the position where you can do double duty, go to your job and just do some metrics, figure out like, what have you been doing for the last week or two or three? And it's like, okay, that you keep your job by doing that. So if I meet this criteria that they've been paying me for, uh, what I'm going to do is figure out how to become more efficient 
get it done faster and maybe shave off, you know, four hours for me to do my business. That's what I did when, okay, I'll tell you the story. After being laid off three times in 18 months, I developed, you know, the hustler mindset. So every job that I got in the two and a half period year period before I started, you know, becoming self-employed and owning businesses, there's a difference between self-employment and owning a business. And I'll get to that in a second. I would go into the job with the attitude of what can I get from this job? What resources can I get? What connections can I get and get out of there as quick as possible? Because my new, my ultimate goal was to get to my own business. So every job that I got from that point of being laid off to going to rent a crate was to position me to get my own business. That's how I ended up selling commercial office furniture because I got the, my, this after rent a crate. That was my first job, second job. You know, those last three jobs that were selling contract office furniture. I knew the business. I had contacts. I was able. So I didn't start my thing with for just raw. I knew the industry. I knew some of the players. I knew price points. I was eloquently positioned to start that kind of business because I had been in it for a few years. Now, the difference between self-employment and having a business. When you are self-employed, the minute that you stop working, the money stops. When you have a business, it doesn't matter if you work or not. The money continues to come in. That is the big difference between being self-employed and having a business. I have a business. I can take off for a week. I'm still going to get paid. That's a business. So when you're putting together your business plan, you have to start figuring out from day one how you can go from being a man or a woman to being the man or the woman. Because you want to get to the position where your business is is you know as close to autopilot as possible and that's one of the reasons that everyone loves the internet because it's very easy once you get it built to set up an internet business that runs on autopilot like i can just tell you youtube channel would probably make you know decent money it wouldn't be enough to support me or anything no stretch of mention like that but it would pay major bills if i stopped making videos today and i didn't make a video for the rest of the year i will still get a check from youtube every month if uh, I don't contribute any more books to Amazon or, um, you know, Kindle right now because I'm working on something else, but I still have stuff up there every month. I get a check from them and I do nothing. So understand you can create a business and I'm going to give you an example. There's a guy who has a cart. I'm not going to tell you what he sells because you know, everyone's like, I want the right, I want the business idea. I want turnkey solutions. I don't want to think, Glendon. I don't want to think. No, that hurts. So he's got a cart, right? Because I'm not going to tell you his business. And he's a consult client. And I don't tell my consult client's business to y'all because they pay for that. And that's how we roll. And he's got a cart, right? And he was running that cart. And I told him, for you to grow your business, you need to get an employee. He was very, very afraid of hiring people. He knew it, but he didn't want to do it. So I just kind of like pushed him, you know, we were like on the tracks and I just pushed him onto the tracks and he did it. And then, you know, it came. He's like, I'm actually making less money. I said, the reason you're making less money is because you haven't had a plan for that free time because you were used to doing all of the work yourself and you never, ever conceived yourself as management. This is one of the reasons that a guy that starts like, you know, a guy like Zuckerberg or Bill Gates or Steve Jobs or the Google guys is very rare for the people that start a company to end up managing it because it's different skill sets. And there are many entrepreneurs who kind of get what I call NCO, um, the NCO, uh, what do you call? yeah, the NCO signal, the NCO syndrome. When I was in the military, there's this indoctrination that, you know, we're, you know, in the enlisted versus the uh, commission officers and it's like you know i'm not an officer i work for a living blah blah it's just stupid it's stupid it's totally totally stupid but many people fall prey to that type of thinking so here you are you're the entrepreneur no one can do it better like no one can do it as good as i can no one can ship like i can so you create this mess of a business that's become a trap and a noose around your neck because you cannot adjust your mentality to become management your goal when starting a business should be to get to the management stage as quick as possible.
even if you're making less money because you have to pay employees. Because once you are out of the business, you can think of better ways to improve the business. I was fortunate when I was in the storage auction business. I never, I didn't do it alone. I had a partner. So there was always division of labor, division of responsibilities. But when it's just you, you got a problem. And the first thing that's going to happen is you're going to wear yourself out. You'll be working seven days a week and you're going to hit the income ceiling because you hit an infrastructure ceiling. So you're you're not going to make any more money. and You're just going to try to grind it out, grind it out because it's like, I don't want to hire employees. I don't want to grow. You know, I want to keep it under the radar. All of that is fear speak. All of that is little bitch speak because there are many people out there that are no smarter than you that have started million dollar businesses and they're sitting at home chewing popcorn while you're burning the midnight oil or the 1 a.m. oil or the 2 a.m. oil or the 3 a.m. oil. It's just a matter of mental repositioning. You have to become management. And part of the hate culture of the well-off or the rich is I'm not going to do anything that they're doing because I despise them. I don't want to be like them. So I'm not going to do anything that would make me even appear to be like them. It's kind of like some black folks and with success, like if white people are doing this stuff that I'm not doing this because, you know, if someone may actually think that I'm white because I'm actually making good decisions and uh, I'm actually building something and I'm staying the fuck out of trouble. No, 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 we can't have that. I got to keep it real stupid. It's the same syndrome. It's the same syndrome because you cannot become what you despise and you cannot have what you hate. And this whole thing about, you know, just just to dispense with the noise, all of this rhetoric and all this talk that you hear from politics. And just to give you my political affiliation, I am neither Democrat. I am neither Republican. I'm I'm nothing. I'm an independent thinker because in my mind, based on the policies that I've seen, most of them are fucking all of us anyway, regardless of what side of the aisle that they're on. So I go in the booth and it's a matter of, okay, I researched this guy, I researched this woman, I researched their voting record, and I just try to make the best decision based on, on the information I have. And it's hard sometimes because it's not even really like you're voting for your favorite. It's like you're voting for the least offensive. <laughs> That's what it is sometimes. So understand when you're listening to all this political rhetoric and stuff, it's designed to keep you a docile, fearful little sheep. So you don't really start thinking because if you start really, really thinking, you'd be like, whoa, whoa, because you this whole thing about tax. I can just tell you a real legal tax dodge real quick. Go to Bermuda or St. Neves or one of these other Caribbean islands, incorporate your company and you don't pay no federal taxes. <laughs> There are so many major corporations in the U.S. that are incorporated in Bermuda. It's ridiculous. Or they have division. That's why when I was like, we're going to tax the rich, we're going to. That's just posture, political posturing, because there are so many things, you know, that I as just the average person know what to do to prevent that from happening. You can't tell me that Joe Billionaire with a floor full of accountants and attorneys is going. (laughs) You're deluding yourself. Let me just break it to you gently. And this is another reason that you need to start a business. The tax code and the laws of the United States of America were designed for number one, business owners, investors and royalty. The new royalty is business owners. So say you are married to um, it's Jack and Jill. You're Jack. You're married to Jill. You have two point four kids. You work and you're killing yourself. And Jill has this ideal of like doing an eBay business. So she does eBay and it's a little frustrating because it's like, you know, you come home, the house ain't clean and everything. So you and Jill sit down and you're just like, okay, I'm a manager type. So you go ahead and you put your hands on Jill's business because now it's y'all's business. And you go ahead and put some some uh, measures in place. And next thing you know, this Jill's business is making just as much money as you're making on your job. And a lot of the stress is gone because now you have money to hire a maid. So you come home, the house is clean. Jill's fucking you every night because she's exhausted and she just went out and bought some new Jimmy Choo's and life is good. And then here comes tax season. Oh, because Jill's got an assistant and this and this and this. You've completely wiped out your federal income tax and you get a big ass refund. 
that is how you do it the smart American hustler business way. And I have friends, I have friends who took my advice, and it wasn't a eBay business, it was another business. And his business, because his wife makes the money and he got laid off and he just went with his business, his business deductions allowed them to completely wipe out her federal obligations. And they got like, I think like $12,000 refund back. So that's another reason you need to start a business because just having a home, I mean, you know, all that's just so you create, you can just from the simple fact of creating a business to create a deduction base for your income would be wise. It would be wise. So that's another power reason for you to start a business. So you get to use and keep more of your money. You start your own business. You can start a SEP, which is a self-employment pension. You can also contribute to a Roth IRA. You can contribute to both because you have earned income and you have business income. Do you understand, understand how this game is played? As long as you keep playing it, I'm not really going to try to stretch myself. I'm going to stay under the radar and I'm going to cuss every time I get fucked. As long as you're that guy, just kill yourself. Just just kill yourself because what's going to happen is one day that guy's going to get real pissed and that guy's going to just go off and he may do something stupid like grab a gun and go shoot somebody cuz he's just mad. You have many people who felt that they were harmed by the system. And then they lash out violently when they really wasn't paying attention to the system because you can become one of the architects of the system. And I know people are like, oh, no, I don't want to be part of it. I just want to live in my little bungalow and raise daisies and pet boo-boo my cat. If your daddy's rich, yeah, you can probably get away with that. If you were like the rest of us where you had to get up and go to work every day, nah, not so much, not so much. And that's another thing. We have a lot of people who are uh, wealthy. I have dated so many women that have received killer bank from inheritances. I remember one. It was shocking because, you know, she's a regular girl. She doesn't floss. And, you know, I just noticed that she wasn't working. And just like, are you, you know, I just said, you know, where's that lunch? I'm like, are you like independently wealthy or something? And she's like, kind of, yeah. I mean, she was embarrassed. She's like, well, my dad left me $7 million. There's a lot of people where I walk around like that. To her credit, she was an ostentatious with it. And, you know, she, she was cool and she managed the money well. So you may have someone like that who's faking the funk that they got to a certain lifestyle based on their hard work. <laughs> She didn't do that. She didn't do that. But I went to school with someone that would do that. And I'm just like, you got to be kidding me. You were born more wealthy than most of us will ever get. So those are other things that you have to learn how to explore. And that's another thing about starting a business. You will be able to read a person. When I meet a business owner and we start talking shop, they know that I'm real because they've been there. And, you know, every time I meet someone and we start talking, they want to give me information. They want to hang out because water seeks its own level. It's an immutable law of nature. And what's happening with many people is there's certain things you can't fake. You know, fake it till you make it. I don't know about that. I don't know about that with certain things. I mean, if it, if it works for you, it works for you. But typically, when you get into developing businesses, and getting to the point where you have to do an LLC and getting an account and all this other stuff, it opens up a whole new world to you, a new wor a world of possibilities, a world of freedom, because once, you know, and, and let's just be really, really clear. Once you start this, the freedom is not going to come day one. It may come year two. It may come year five, just depending on who you are, what you're selling. And there's also people that the freedom is to do what they want to do every day. Uh, Cause you know, if you see my video, the passion trap, do not get caught up in. I'm gonna do my passion. Do what you love, and the money will come. That's bullshit. There's a lot of. If your passion is like you know, selling diamonds, okay. If your passion is selling fine steaks at you know 150 bucks a plate, okay. If your passion is selling cars and making cars, if your passion is selling guns, yeah. But if your passion is wallflowers. If your passion is wall art, if your passion is rock collecting, if your passion is something that 
everybody and their mothers already doing? Uh, not so much. When I started this channel, I hated YouTube. I would do videos, camera wouldn't be on. I mean, just straight goofy, man. Just goofy. Sit there, do the turn around, the camera wasn't even on. I was like, oh my God. And then, you know, when you do the second take, it doesn't, it's, you know, it's like it doesn't go as well as the first. So I had that, uploading stuff, uploading the video, delete the video off the camera. Then for some reason, I'm clicking the wrong box in YouTube, delete the video. So I got to do it all over. I mean, just, it was frustrating. I couldn't stand it. And I was just like, woke up one morning and I was like, I got to do a video today, Lord. What I'm telling you is, I love this stuff now, but in the beginning, not so much. Couldn't stand it. Hated it. Had to force myself to do it. So the lesson that you should understand is there's something out there that you want to do and it's challenging. When you become really good at it, it's going to become your passion. That's when it's going to become your passion, not before. And if you take something that, you know, was really hard and then it becomes your passion, your self-esteem, your confidence, all that stuff's just going to go through the roof. So there are many, many reasons that you should start a business. But for freedom, tax relief, and learning business skills, and creating a better life for you and your family, those are the top reasons. Now let's talk about, well, you know, Glendon starting a business is risky. Damn, Skippy, it is. It is. But so's having a job today. We have a new thing that's coming, and it's called disruption. Your job that you have today, which you're safe, and you know, you're know you the person that can go off for three-hour lunches and people, nothing happens because they need your ass. Five years, probably won't be the case. Because there are so many people out there in the world that are working on solutions to these problems. QuickBooks, clear, you know, there used to be a career called bookkeeping. QuickBooks eradicated all those jobs. Someone right now is working on something that's going to clear out a whole shitload of jobs in the next two years. Just not going to need you. Not even personal. It's not like you didn't show up. It's not like your performance reviews were bad. It's like, why are we going to pay 100 people in this corporation $50,000 a year when we can spend $150,000 for this software package that's going to do everything they do and we don't have to pay workers comp, we don't have to pay medical benefits, we don't have to deal with Family Medical Leave Act. You see where I'm going with that? It ain't personal, it's just what would you do if you were the owner of that company? Would you keep those 100 people at 50 G's a piece or would you drop the 150000 on the software in the mainframe? It's a no-brainer. It's a no-brainer. Well, I guess we're getting ready to lay off 90 people. And I'm going to Disneyland. I mean, that's the reality. And that's another thing that's the thing that people get twisted that someone that goes out and risks their money, their health, sometimes their marriage to start a business for some reason is entitled to employ you. <laughs> I mean, when I think about that, because I always hear this stuff is like, well, they're giving our jobs away. Well, did you start a company? Because if you didn't start a company, it's really not your job. It really, really isn't. And in my life, I've probably hired about from the contract office furniture business, probably about 90 people. And I'm telling you, it's 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 always a process. It's always a process. And. You have many people that feel that they are more valuable than they actually are. That's one of the overriding sentiments, and it creates a problem. Because when you have someone that feels that they're more valuable than they really are in your organization, and you hire them, you're not going to have them long. Or they're going to create problems, or you're going to end up firing them. Because they're already disenfranchised from day one. That's why you got to really, that's why you got to start hiring people and just go through that process and learn to read those clues and learn how to navigate that because if you're going to go from being a man or a woman to the man or the woman you're going to have to do this you're going to have to hire people i mean even like hiring freelancers it's the same thing you still got to hire these people so understand you need a job that is yours and the only job that you can create that is yours is by creating your own business. I'm not going to fire myself. I mean, there's days I don't like myself and, 
you know, a few days I think I didn't take a shower. And I was like, who? Oh, that's you. Yeah, we need to send a memo from human resources that, you know, daily showers are necessity. They're a necessity around here. We got to do this stuff. But I'm not going to say that to you that it's going to be easy. I'm going to tell you it's going to be challenging Uh, for some of you. It's going to be the hardest thing you've ever done. But when you go to the other side and you have created this life for yourself and it's not about money it's about the freedom because if you can get free or you can control your time you put yourself in an awesome position to have what i consider a great life you really do all right this is glendon cameron and i will see you on the good side